Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of Friday Night Scripture Reading. We've been working our way through, well, we just started last week in the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. Uh, let's get started with our catechism question for the week. Catechism question number 34 from Spurgeon's Catechism. What is sanctification? The answer, sanctification is the work of God's Spirit where we are made new again in the image of God, made able to die to sin more and more and live a holier life. And tomorrow, if you're available around at, well, not around, at 2 o'clock, we'll be meeting at Randall's Restaurant in Churchill as we continue going through Sinclair Ferguson's book, The Whole Christ. So if you're available, join us. Um, we're getting close to wrapping that up. After that, we'll be moving on to Gospel People by Michael Reeves. That was a book that was donated by Crossway Publishing to the Deeply Rooted Conference in 2022. Um, so join us for that. Without further ado, here we go. John chapter 4, reading out of the LSB. Therefore, when Jesus knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself was not baptizing, but his disciples were, he left Judea and went away into Galilee, again into Galilee, and he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, being wearied from his journey, was sitting thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, How do you, being a Jew, ask for a drink from me, being a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. She said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of the water of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst, ever. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty nor come back here to draw. He said to her, Go call your husband and come back here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have correctly said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. This you have said truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me. An hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the, the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will declare all things to us. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. He was saying there, by saying I am, he was saying that he is God. This is Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. He says, I am who I am. And at this point, his disciples came, and they were marveling that he was speaking with a woman. Yet no one said, What do you seek? Or why are you speaking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went into the city and said to the men, 
Come, see a man who told me all the things that I have done. Is this not the Christ? They went out of the city and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples were saying to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. Do you not say there are yet four months, and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, that they are white for harvest. Even now he who reaps is receiving wages and is gathering fruit for life eternal, so that he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this case the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. From that city many of the Samaritans believed in him because of the word of the woman who bore witness. He told me all the things I ha that I have done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they were asking him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. And they were saying to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves and know that this one is truly the Savior of the world. And after the two days, he went from there into Galilee. For Jesus himself bore witness that a prophet has no honor in his own country. So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did in Jerusalem at the feast, for they themselves also went to the feast. Then he came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a royal official whose son was sick in Capernaum, when he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and was asking him to come down and heal his son, for he was about to die. So Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will never believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. And while he was still going, his slaves met him, saying that his son was alive. So he inquired of them the hour when he began to get better. Then they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed in his whole household. This is again a second sign that Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. John chapter 5. After these things, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethsaida, having five porticos. In these lay a multitude of those who were sick, blind, lame, and withered, waiting for the moving of the waters, <clears throat> For an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever then first, after the stirring up of the water, stepped in, was made well from whatever sickness with which he was afflicted. And I want to mention, in a lot of Bibles, that's in brackets where it talks about the angel stirring the waters. That was, by most scholars, determined that that was a commentary that was copied in some manuscripts. The earliest manuscripts don't have that part of chapter 4 and the very end of verse 3, or uh, verse 4 and the very end of verse 3. So, sorry for the interruption. And a man was there who had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been sick a long time, he said to him, Do you wish to get well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And immediately the man became well and picked up his mat and began to walk. Now it was the Sabbath on that day. So the Jews were saying to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, He who made me well was the one who said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who? 
is the man who said to you, Pick up your mat and walk. But the man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away while there was a crowd in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you have become well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and disclosed to the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. And for this reason, the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But he answered them, My father is working until now, and I myself am working. For this reason, therefore, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he not only was breaking the Sabbath, but also was calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Therefore, Jesus answered and was saying to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing from himself unless it is something he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, these things the son also does in the same manner. For the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself is doing, and the father will show him greater works than these, so that you will marvel. For just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the son also gives life to whom he wishes. For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all will honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life, and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, even so he gave to the Son also to have life in himself. And he gave him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming, in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice, and will come forth. Those who did the good deeds to the resurrection of life, those who committed the evil deeds to, the, to a resurrection of judgment. I can do nothing from myself. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I alone bear witness about myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness about me. And I know that the witness which he gives about me is true. You have sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. But the witness I receive is not from man, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was the lamp that was burning and shining, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But the witness I have is greater than the witness of John, for the works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me, he has borne witness about me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. And you do not have his word abiding in you. For you do not believe him who sent, whom he sent. You search the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life. It is these that bear witness about me. And you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. I do not receive glory from men. But I know you, that you do not have the love of God in yourselves. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another, and you do not seek the glory that is from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father, or accuse you to the Father. The one who accuses you is Moses, in whom you have set your hope. For if you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? <clears throat> John chapter 6. After these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, or Tiberias. Now a large crowd was following him, because they were seeing the signs which he was doing on those who were sick. Then Jesus went up on the mountain. And there he was sitting down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was near. Therefore Jesus, lifting up his eyes and seeing that a large crowd was coming to him, said to Philip, Where should we buy bread so that these people may eat? 
And this he was saying to test him, test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, for every one to receive a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are these for so many people? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there were much there was much grass in that place. So the men sat down in numbers of about five thousand. Jesus then took the loaves, and having given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, likewise also of the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the leftover pieces so that nothing will be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. Therefore, when the people saw this sign, which he had done, they were saying, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. So Jesus, knowing that they were going to come and take him by force to make him king, withdrew again to the mountain by himself alone. Now when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, and after getting into a boat, they began to cross the sea to Capernaum. It had already become dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. And the sea was stirred up because a strong wind was blowing. Then, when they had rowed about twenty-five or thirty stadia, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near to the boat, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. So they were willing to receive him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land to which they were going. On the next day the crowd, which stood on the other side of the sea, saw that there was no other small boat there except one and that Jesus had not entered with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other small boats came from Tiberias near to the place where they ate the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the small boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you, for on him the Father, God, set his seal. Therefore they said to him, What should we do so that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who sent, whom sent, who he has sent. So they said to him, What then do you do for a sign so that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Moses has not given you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, always give us this bread. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Once again, the other, another I am statement of Jesus. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hunger. And he who believes in me will never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Now this is the will of him who sent me, that of all that he has given me I lose nothing. But raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. Therefore the Jews were grumbling about him, because he said, I am the bread of life, the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop grumbling among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Let me read that again. 
That's verse 44 of John chapter 6. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And also the bread which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Then the Jews began to argue with one another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of heaven, not as the fathers ate and died, he who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this said, this is a difficult statement. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing that his disciples were grumbling at this, said to them, Does this cause you to stumble? What then, if you see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before, the Spirit is the one who gives life? The flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe, and who it was that would betray him. And he was saying, For this reason I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted him from the Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples went away and were not walking with him any more. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I myself not choose you, the twelve, and yet one of you is a devil? Now he was speaking of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. Hey, praise God for the reading of his word. Thanks for joining us. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Remember, tomorrow at 2 p.m., Ambassador Evangelism, going through the whole Christ by Sinclair Ferguson, meeting at Randall's Restaurant. On the Lord's Day, Sunday, we'll have Sunday school at 10 a.m., corporate worship at 11 a.m., and evening service at 6 p.m. Y'all have a great weekend. Goodbye.